What up, what up, what up, what up? It is Monday. And I am getting everything set up over here. Let me make sure. There we go. So I can see there. Let's see if I do it that way. Hold on. Trying stuff new, y'all. Trying stuff new and making sure it is all good in the hood. Making sure we're all set for it's Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. It's Media Maverick Monday. So let us get started. Long as you tell me, you can hear me and you see me. Facebook, I got Instagram going over here, but let me know. You can see and hear me, and then we're gonna get right to it because I'm not gonna be here long. I got stuff to do. So let me know if you can hear me and see me. What? <laughs> Lord have mercy. For some reason, whew, you just made me nervous. You know who I'm talking about. You just made me nervous because you my stalker, Mr. Shaft. Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right, so let's get rolling. So for those of you who don't know, I am TJ Mercer. I'm the chief noisemaker of the Media Matters Academy. I've got my Facebook Live going over on here. I've got my Instagram going over here. And then maybe next week I'm going to do YouTube Live so I can cover all platforms. But for those of you who don't know, I'm TJ Merson, the Chief Noise Maker of Media Mappers Academy. I already said that. And what that means is I teach authors, experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs how to book themselves in the media without a publicist, without being a celebrity. I believe this is my first time going live on IG. So IG every Monday at 6.15 Pacific, 8.15 Central, 9.15 Eastern. I do what we call Media Maverick Monday, where I dish out media tips. And a lot of days, they are, most days, they are absolutely yummy and are very helpful. So I'm keeping my eye out on the chat. If this is your first time being introduced to the yumminess known as TJ, welcome. Uh, it get a little crazy over here. I'm loud. I'm boisterous. I love what I do. I serve authors, experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs on how to book themselves in the media without a publicist. Hey, Coach Tawana, and without being a celebrity. As a matter of fact, I am lit today because my Monday started off puppet. Why? Because one of my brand new media mavericks, brand new media mavericks, she's been in the class for six weeks. We've been six weeks. I've taught pitching for the last two weeks, pitching for, uh, pitching on paper, pitching on the phone. Girlfriend messed around and got herself booked on Fox using the principles that I taught her. So, uh, or teach the class. I didn't just like sit her down and like, you, you're going to do this. You're gonna... No, it's the whole class. It's called Media Matters Masters. So today's tip, today's tip is what is the difference between a media wannabe and a media maverick. Carol, Carol Ann says, you mean air day tips are always lit. Yes, they are. I'm always, if you are going to give me your time, I promise I am going to bring you value if you are that person who are looking for how to actually make some noise in the media. I'm not going to show up without having anything to say that I don't think will bring value to you. So with that said, we are the, the four traits that are the, means the difference between a media wannabe and a media maverick. Trait number one, a media wannabe goes into media with no strategy. The first thing that I ask any of my private clients that I teach my, my Media Matters Masters is, what is it that you want to happen as a result of you doing this interview? What is it that you want the viewer, the listener, the reader, wherever you're doing this interview, what is it that you want to do? Because you having a clear idea about that is the difference between a media wannabe and a media maverick. All of my Mavericks know at the end of their segment, they are clear. I want them to do X. 
I want them to do Y. I want them to do Z. It's clear. They go in knowing that there is a strategy behind what they are there to do. That leads us into trait number two. Trait number two, the difference between a media wannabe and a media maverick is a media wannabe stays tuned to W-I-I-F-M-E. Hey, Tayana. Hi, Pumpkin. Haven't seen you in a while. W-I-I-F-M-E. What's in it for me? My mavericks know this. I beat this in their brains. They know a media wannabe is only interested in what's in it for me. W-I-I-F-M-E. However, when you are being strategic with your media, when you are being strategic on your whole approach, when you are being strategic, you are mapping that thing out from start to finish, from idea conceptualizing to crafting your segment, to pitching your segment, to crafting your sound bites. Everything is strategic. And so you are wanting to make sure that you stay tuned. Instead, a media wannabe is tuned to W-I-I-F-M-E. A media maverick knows that they are, hey, hi, T, it's been a minute since I've seen you live. Hi, Bert. Uh, a media maverick knows that you are staying tuned to W-I-I-F-T-V, W-I-I-F-T-L, W-I-I-F-T-R. What's in it for the listener? What's in it for the reader? What's in it for the viewer? So that strategy of you crafting that segment, that strategy of you pitching that producer, that editor, that strategy is, is built around, it's not about me, boo. It's not about me. It's what's in it for the viewer, the listener, the reader. If I'm going to have that three to five minutes of, of television, if I'm going to have that 10 to 15 minutes, that 10 to 15 minutes of radio, then you know here is what I am thinking. It's first and foremost in my mind. What's in it for the viewer? What's in it for the listener? What's in it for the reader? I'm not wasting their time. When I go on Facebook Live, when I go on IG, I am thinking what will serve them? What is the thing that my expertise will tell them that they don't necessarily know? Now, transparency, sometimes it gets hard. Because I'm so close to my expertise, I am a beast at this. I don't make apologies about that. For those of you who are on IG that don't necessarily know that about me, this is the one area I know I'm a beast in. I suck at a lot of things, but media ain't one. So with that said, with that said, it's hard sometimes because I don't think that that's a, a strong enough nugget. So then I have to run it by somebody and go, okay, so you think this, this, is, this is valuable to know? And they go, yeah, talk about that. That's the same thing that's going to happen with you. You are so close to your expertise. You can do it in your sleep that you're not realizing it is so valuable. One of the things that I've discovered of doing Facebook Lives consistently is that people love for me to do is when something pops off in the media and uh, something pops off in the media and somebody does an interview, they love that I will go through and I'll break that interview down to the nth degree in real time, in real time. Had no clue until I did the first one. I think it was the start, the, the president of Starbucks, when they got in trouble about arresting the two black men, I did a breakdown of their interview. Had no clue that y'all would find that valuable because I can do that in my sleep. I do that without even thinking. I think in story, I think that way. So it's not even anything, but it was like, okay, I need to do something. Okay, well maybe I should actually do this. What do you think? And that, 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 um, that thread blew up. I also did it with Omarosa's interview on the Today Show, blew up. So I'm so close to it that sometimes it's hard for me to, uh, to figure out what do y'all think is valuable. So know that you're going to have that issue as well when you're thinking about what, what is in it for the viewer, the listener, the reader. Now, here's the other thing that I do. I ask y'all, what do you want me to talk about? What will help you? What serves you? I don't assume. 
Birdie saying, I find the interview breakdown useful. Carol Ann says, that was the bomb. Dr. Alley, hi, Dr. Alley says, that was good. So I ask, and then I ask you, was this valuable? And then I ask y'all for feedback. Y'all are good. My, my Facebook Live, my IG people, this is your first day, I think, of me doing Media, media Tip Monday. But if you stick around, you'll see. You'll give me start giving me feedback. If you think this is valuable, y'all let me know. You'll start telling me like you just did. But the thing is, I'm always thinking about you. What serves you? What takes you to the next level? Regardless if it's a needle point move or a ginormous leap, what serves you? Trait number three, a media wannabe does an interview, but a media maverick has a conversation. Now, let me qualify that. An interview is what the formal term is. But everybody who coaches and trains under me, regardless if you're on the DIY level or if you're on my one-on-one level, anybody who coaches with me, they're going to know we're going to have a conversation. This is not an interview. What happens is that also cuts down on some of your nervousness because one of the things that I also teach is sounding effortless takes effort. You have to practice and 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 practice 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 and practice some more and then get up the next day and practice some more. So that your talking points are so ingrained in you that you're not really thinking about what's in what you it's not really you have not having to process. I know media backwards and forwards, so I don't necessarily have to process. There's sometimes you you guys have experienced me having a, a brain freeze and I'll just ask you what was I talking about? Reason why I do that because I'm having a conversation with you. I'm having a conversation with you. When I do official interviews, it is a conversation between me and the host. I'm not thinking about the listeners per se being present right there because I've already mapped out the strategy of what I want to happen as a result of this interview. So that strategy is done. So when I'm doing the interview, I'm settled on what my strategy is so I can be fully present. I'm not thinking if it's five people. I'm not thinking if it's 500. I'm not thinking it's a thousand people that's going to hear this interview. When I do big television, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, I'm not thinking about is half a million people watching this cute face. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking, let me just have a conversation with this host and it will translate to the viewers. If I focus on having a comp, my host is right here, if y'all can't see. If I'm just converse, conversing with the host, by the way, conversate is not a word. So just so you know, if I'm conversing with the host, it's just a, a situation where all the viewers just get to eavesdrop on us having a good time. The, the, the interview goes way better, way smoother. If I just focus on having a conversation, I'm not in my head. I'm using their name in the interview. I'm connecting with them. And then I'm drawing the viewer, the listener, the reader in. All right. So a media wannabe has does an interview. A media maverick has a conversation. All right. Uh, And then the last one, the fourth trait. And this should be a given. This should be a given. If you've been around me for any length of time, you have heard me say this so much that you should know what's coming. A media wannabe does media for the sole purpose of promoting. For the sole purpose of promoting. But a media maverick is using media to serve. Hey, Reg, cuz, what's up? A media maverick is using media to serve. They know with that platform comes great responsibility. They know that they are the answer to somebody's prayer. A media maverick knows that they have the solution to someone's problem. So they don't take it for granted. They don't just trash the responsibility. They show up prepared. They show up knowledgeable. They show up present to have the conversation. Makeda says, serve, serve, serve. I preach that. I live by that. I walk that. 
I draw people to me for that, which is why you will never hear me say I'm going to make you a celebrity. You'll never hear me say that. What you will help hear me say is I'm going to teach you to leverage the power of the media so that you can be effective for your book, your business, or your brand. One of my favorite quotes that I recently discovered, and it really did become uh, my mantra, my motto for Media Mavericks Academy, is that it was from T.D. Jakes. And he said when he was doing an interview, he was talking about uh, the, the, the interviewer asked him about his rise, you know, and to be, you know, at one point, I think Time Magazine called him America's preacher. And um, they were talking about his rise. And he said, you know, at one point he got frustrated because he, he told God, you know, darts are being thrown at me. People are coming after me. I never asked you for this fame. I never asked you to be famous. I'm paraphrasing what he's saying now. But I never asked for that. What I did ask you for is how to be effective. So for me, that is the division, the divider, the distinguishing factor between a media wannabe and a media maverick. A media wannabe is looking for fame. A media maverick is looking to be effective. And like Bishop Jake says, the byproduct of being effective is fame. But it's not the, it's not the main concern. I teach my clients how to be effective. That's all I'm interested in. When I show up, no matter if I'm speaking, no matter if I'm on Facebook Live, if I'm on IG, no matter what, even in my posts, my written posts, I'm looking to be effective, not famous. Now, will that come? Will I, you know, will, if you do it right, will you continue to be more recognized? Yes, because I'm teaching you to make noise. I'm teaching you to be a game changer. I'm really teaching you how to be a set, which is somebody's answer prayer. Y'all know, for those of you who have been around me for a long time, you know, I wake up every day asking God, just show me how to be a sap. Somebody's answered prayer. So all I'm interested in and all the people that I train and all the people that I actually draw to me are interested in being effective. And when I've settled that, when I've settled that I'm going to go in for it with a strategy, when I'm, I'm going to definitely have a strategy, when I've settled that I'm not going to do an interview, I'm going to have a conversation with the host. When I've settled that I'm going to stay tuned to what's in it for them, W-I-I-F-T-V, what's in it for the viewer, what's in it for the listener, T-L, what's in it for the reader, T-R. And then I know going in that I am going to serve that platform. Then that shows up in everything that I do. No matter what platform I'm on. That's when I'm teaching my, my Media Mavericks Masters clients on how to book themselves. From start to finish, it is about serving. From the conception of the, the segment, I said this, from the conception of the segment to what it is for you, for you to decide what do you want to happen as a result of the segment. When you take that segment and turn it into a um, when you turn it into a pitch, it's all about serving. So I've crafted the, ser the, the segment around serving the audience. I'm crafting the pitch around serving that producer to show that I'm interested in serving the audience. When I'm showing up to do the sound bites, when I'm, I'm working on what's going to come out my mouth, I'm serving. And then when I'm inputting the strategies to get them from the TV screen, the radio, the podcast, the, the print magazine, I'm working on what is the strategy to get them from there back to my website is still all about the service. So you got that? So those are the four. A, a media wannabe shows up, tuned into W-I-I-F-M-E, what's in it for me, but a media map shows up to be tuned to W-I-I-F-T-V, T-L-T-R, what's in it for the viewer, the listener, the reader, a media wannabe shows up to do an interview, a media maverick shows up to have a conversation, 
uh, a media wannabe, doesn't have a strategy. Now, let me, let me, while I'm thinking about it, let me also say this around uh, the conversation piece. You have to also have a strategy in what's going to come out your mouth because depending on what your brand is, that host may want to take you down a rabbit hole because they find it fascinating of what you just said. You have to have a strategy and get adept at taking control of that interview respectfully. I'm actually gonna teach this uh, in two weeks with my Media Matters Masters of really how to take control of your segment of respectfully because it's still that host platform and get them back on track and get to make sure that you have non-negotiable things that are going to come out of your mouth no matter what. Because in television, you only have three to five minutes. You can't afford the the host to get drawn to your pretty hairstyle or want to tell you all about her friend who had the same issue that you're there to talk about. You can't get pulled down that rabbit hole because then that's going to get that's going to eat up your time. So you have to go in knowing the strategy of even the conversation that you're going to have. And then the last thing that is key above all paramount on everything that I teach is you have to actually be there to serve the audience. Serve the audience, not promote. In media maverick land, promote is a dirty word. We don't use promote in media maverick land. All right. Those are your four traits. For those of you who don't know, I am coming to Atlanta with my very first live event all day. I'm excited. And it is called Serve the Media serve the media. It is the ultimate publicity boot camp for your business, your book, or your brand. And seats are already going. You have to apply, IG. You have to apply. Why? Because I am committed to walk my talk. I have to make sure that every person in that room, I have something for them to serve. I will not have you spend time with me unnecessarily. I will not take your money I will not take your time from you. It's too valuable. So you have to apply so I can look at to make sure what I'm teaching that day is an all day event in Atlanta. You will find out the actual venue, which I already booked. Yes, because in the pre-sale, the pre-sale sold enough for me to go ahead and take the venue. So because I told you all. Some of y'all have been asking me to do this for years. And I was like, yeah, it's all good and fun in theory until it's at, you have to release some of that cha-ching. And so y'all showed me that you wanted it. So the venue is paid for and lunch will be included. And I'm this close, this close to locking down the caterer, which is this phenomenal woman who catered when I was doing Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish, she filmed Night School. And then she did, uh, she was a caterer. She did craft service, but her food is so bomb that we would skip the catering that day to just wait for what she was going to bring us that night for snacks. And uh, she did Shaft. And so she and I are this close. So you know that food going to be banging. Um, the investment, the investment for all day is one... Let me just make sure I don't lie. General admission, 197. General admission, 197. VIP is 297. VIP is 297. And if you go to servethemedia.com, you will see what is offered with VIP. There is an early bird. There is an early bird that is now active that you get 50 bucks off if you actually reserve your spot by October 8th. And then it's going to go to its regular price. So if you go to servethemedia.com, servethemedia.com, you can actually apply and get registered uh, right now. And the VIP is only 15 spots. So make sure if you want to roll VIP, I think VIP, don't quote me, VIP, you get reserved seating. You're going to get, uh, I'm going to do a printed version of the News Jacking Guide 101, and you will get a signed copy of that. You also will get a 20-minute session with me, which is called a B12 shot, and I think that's it. I think that's it. So it's in downtown Atlanta, October 27th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You think I'm full of energy through the screen, baby? <laughs> when you get me in person, 
is a whole other ball game. So I'm looking forward to um, seeing some of y'all and hugging some of y'all. And when you see me post on social media, all I ask if I've ever poured into you in a level that was valuable, all I'm asking is you to share it for me. If it's not for you, please share it. So for the people who it is for, because I'm really committed to serving and uh, helping more authors, experts, coaches, and entrepreneurs, how to make noise, show them how to make noise about their business, their book, and their brand. All right. So with that said, servethemedia.com. Oh, I didn't change the screen. Uh, servethemedia.com is the website, servethemedia.com. Uh, Love is asking how much should how much should change. One ninety seven for general admission. Two ninety seven for VIP. Early bird though is one forty seven for general admission and two forty seven for VIP. So early bird is good to October eighth. October eighth. All right. So let's count it down. Let's count it down. Uh, so I can make sure there's no more questions before I tap it out and I get back in the lab working on stuff for y'all. So in 10, nine, oh wait, I got this little thing. Did I show y'all this? I come with my own applause. Y'all ain't got to clap for me. I'm going to clap for myself. <laughs> so uh, Kristen Chenner was gave, gave me this. So 10, nine, eight, any more questions? Anything you want me to cover uh, next week? Talk about for Media Tip Monday, six. Five, four, three, two. I'm out. Bye.